San Antonio starts right now. A girl trapped on a roof as flames spread around her home. How San Antonio firefighters were finally able to rescue her. And less than two weeks out from the midterm election, why Georgia State Senate candidate Herschel Walker is accused once again of paying a woman to have an abortion. Outside with live cam, waiting for the sun to come up at 743 this morning. Right now we are in the lower 50s here in San Antonio. Nice, cool start to our Thursday. It is October 27th. Thanks for joining us this morning. Another cool morning. I enjoy using those jackets finally. Absolutely. Mike Osterhage is here, and it was an absolutely yep. picture-perfect fall day across South Texas. I wish we could copy and paste this for days to come. I thought the exact same thing yesterday afternoon. Yeah. Sitting outside, we had a little bite in the, in the evening hours outside, and it was just it's like, yeah, perfect. Yeah, just fantastic. It's going to be great today again, but we will have increasing clouds. It's going to be up to 80 today and then some pretty good changes coming in here overnight and especially this time tomorrow morning. First of all, you look outside right now and we do have lots of clear skies out there. We have temperatures that uh, if I can get this button going there are in the low 50s, some 40s around up maybe a couple of degrees compared to this time yesterday. Still really, really nice. Still jacket weather and then you won't need it later on this afternoon. We do have a low amount of mold in the atmosphere and uh, this morning I think we continue to drop down a few more degrees. We'll eventually bottom out right around 50. So a chilly morning and then Pretty much add 30 to that. Once again, add up to 80 degrees later on today. Increasing clouds. And then tonight, a couple of sprinkles are possible. Then we'll see more rain in the overnight hours and tomorrow morning. Going to get that all sorted out. Take a look at the weekend. Take a look at the uh, trick-or-treat forecast as well. That's coming up in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Thank you, Mike. San Antonio firefighters say a girl was trapped on a roof as flames spread around her. Now, this was on Comet Manor around 7 p.m. last night. That is not far from Loop 410 and Ray Ellison Boulevard on the southwest side. Firefighters believe that that fire first started in the kitchen. The girl says smoke alarms woke her up. She then climbed out of her window and onto the roof to alert crews that she was there, and that's where she was rescued. Four people live at that home. However, firefighters say she was the only one home at the time. The countdown to the midterm elections and major developments in closely watched races. Pennsylvania Senate candidate John Fetterman is now responding to critics who've raised new concerns about his health after his debate performance. And as Ike Ajachi reports, Georgia candidate Herschel Walker is addressing a new accusation that he paid for another woman's abortion. A second woman has now come forward, claiming Georgia Senate candidate Herschel Walker paid for her to have an abortion. The anonymous woman spoke via speakerphone at a news conference. He encouraged me to have an abortion and gave me the money to do so. The woman says she got pregnant in 1993, claiming Walker pressured her to get an abortion. She provided what she describes as evidence of the relationship, but no evidence of the actual abortion. ABC News has not verified her claims, which Walker denies. I'm done with this foolishness. I've already told people this is a lie and I'm not going to entertain continue to carry a lie alone. Walker is a staunch opponent of abortion rights. Earlier this month, he denied paying for another woman's abortion, the mother of one of his children. She provided receipts from a clinic and a copy of a check she claims Walker gave to her to pay for the procedure. Meanwhile, in the hotly contested Pennsylvania Senate race, John Fetterman on the campaign trail with musician Dave Matthews last night in Pittsburgh. Fetterman bluntly acknowledged his lingering auditory issues from a recent stroke, calling Tuesday's debate against Republican Mehmet Oz not easy. I may not get every, every word the right way, but I will always do the right thing in Washington, D.C. Dr. Oz, in his first appearance since the debate, did not comment on Fetterman's difficulties. He's also standing by his position on abortion that made immediate headlines after the debate. I want women, doctors, local uh, political leaders, letting the democracy that's always allowed our nation to thrive to put the best ideas forward so states can decide for themselves. In the meantime, President Biden is trying to focus on the economy. Biden announcing a plan to crack down on so-called junk fees that make everything from bank transactions to cable TV bills more expensive. Meanwhile, former President Trump is scheduling more rallies for Republican candidates. He'll visit Iowa, Ohio, Pennsylvania, and Florida before Election Day. Ike Ajachi, ABC News, Washington. 
Well, as you may have heard right by now, a triple threat of respiratory viruses is resulting in a severe shortage of pediatric hospital beds across the country. At least nine states and Washington, D.C. are already above 80 percent capacity. Another five states above 90 percent capacity. According to the CDC, respiratory illnesses are appearing earlier and in more people than in recent years. The Federal Health Agency also says there's been early increases in flu activity across most of the U.S. This morning, we will learn how the U.S. economy did in the third quarter of this year. The Bureau of Economic Analysis releasing that gross domestic product data in a few hours. Economists believe it will show growth. However, not so as many Americans are tightening their budgets. Average gas prices are up from a month ago despite recent drops, and health insurance premiums are rising. Today's GDP report also cannot predict the future. OPEC Plus production cuts are scheduled to start next week. And some experts say the Federal Reserve's rate increases have yet to impact the economy fully. After 36 drawings in a row with no grand prize winner, the Powerball jackpot now stands at $800 million. No ticket matched all six numbers in last night's drawing. The cash value of the prize now $384 million. It would be the second largest prize in Powerball history. The biggest of all time, $1.5 billion in January 2016. I thought we had one bigger than that more recently. Next drawing is coming up on Saturday night. I've got to remember to buy a ticket one of these days. <laughs> that was mega? Oh, uh, right. okay. Yeah. That's what it was. Mike, you're a lottery, lottery expert. I trust you. Yes. I don't know about expert, but <laughs> never won. <laughs> He's like, I'm an expert at losing money. Oh. Uh, 436, 52 degrees. And do you need to cool off with a healthy snack? We're going to tell you how to make some delicious fall flavored smoothies. And the Spurs could not get the sweep of the Timberwolves on the road last night. Why Coach Pop says he still considers this a win for the team. I know. They had the Timberwolves last time. Looking outside with those Transguy cameras, Loop 410 at FM 78, things are moving in that shot. If you've been waiting for warmer mornings, we are not there yet. This is another cool start to the day, We're hovering right above 50 degrees right now. Just getting started here on GMSA. We'll be right back. San Antonio Spurs looking to sweep their first road trip of the season as they face the Timberwolves for the second time in three nights last night, but they'd have to do it without Devin Vassell and Josh Primo. First quarter, Jeremy Sohan nails his first three of his NBA career. Trey Jones tr tracks down the long rebound to start a fast break, dishes to Sohan for the bucket. Jones led the Spurs with nine first half points. Wolves would still lead going into the break. T-Wolves lead balloons to 17 in the third. Keldon Johnson giving the Spurs some life as he drains the three. A little later, Josh Richardson nails the straightaway three to cap off a 10-0 run to cut the T-Wolves lead down to seven. Richardson finds Jakob Pertle in the paint, and he finishes with the layup, and the Spurs within five. Start of the fourth, Spurs are back down double digits. Spurs got 27 from Keldon Johnson, and all five starters were in double figures, but it was not enough. Spurs fall 134 to 122. However, going three on one on their first road trip of the season, is a win. We were very solid in the third quarter. We were down 15. They cut it in half. Only had two turnovers. And that says a lot about the group's character. They just keep on pushing and, uh, you know, gave themselves an opportunity. Next, the Spurs come home to host the Chicago Bulls. Tip-off is tomorrow night at 7.30. The UTSA Roadrunners getting a much-deserved week off to heal up as some of their mounting injuries after going 6-2. and two. The team still undefeated in Conference USA with four games left. Still, the Roadrunners hit the practice field yesterday with a little different schedule to accommodate the injuries. That includes cryotherapy treatments for first time in the tr Jeff Trailer era to help players recover more quickly. Pretty expensive. Uh deal so any boosters out there that wants to contribute to the UTSA football account we'd appreciate it but we gotta we gotta take some you know drastic measures and times when you're just this tired and this beat up and played that many games in a row and uh, I just felt it was what was best for our kids to get their legs back. It was kind of just like a, the ice tub without getting wet um, so I, I prefer it more um, I just think it's a lot more easier um, and that's just something that I know a lot of guys like to do as well. 
When the Roadrunners do resume their schedule, they will travel to UAB on Saturday, November 5th at 2.30 p.m. Bertie Champion will be the first boys water polo team from the San Antonio to compete at the UIL State Tournament. Chargers defeated Clark in the regional final 16-13 to earn their playoff spot. Now they prepare to make even more history by taking on Richmond Foster in the state semifinals Saturday at 1.30 p.m. Good luck. Yes, good luck. Time now, 442 and 52 degrees for now. Drinking smoothies is a great way to get some extra vitamins and nutrients in your diet. After the break, we're going to show you how to get an added health boost with some fall flavors. Plus, a first look at how more teens and young adults are becoming addicted to online sports gambling. Welcome back. It is 445 with online sports betting now legal in 30 states. More teenagers and young adults are becoming addicted to gambling. ABC's Juju Chang has the details of today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA's First Look, a parenting alert, kids and gambling. If you have a phone on you and you have connection to the internet, you can gamble whenever you want. Steve is an 18-year-old speaking candidly about his gambling addiction, which began at age 15. He's asked to be in shadow, to use a different name and alter his voice to hide his identity. All it took was playing dice. From there, it just kind of grew. How much did you win? It's a couple hundred dollars. Teenagers and young people are significantly at higher risk of developing gambling disorder than adults in part because their brains are not fully developed, just like they are with substance use disorders. Their ability to evaluate risk, their ability to handle loss, isn't as secure as an adult. And we'll have more on this important parenting alert coming up at 7 a.m. with your GMA First Look. I'm Juju Chang. Well, everything this time of year seems to be pumpkin spice flavored, including smoothies. 12 on your sides, Marilyn Morris shows us how to turn those pumpkins and autumn apples into a healthy meal. Yes, you really can drink your fall fruits and veggies in a yummy smoothie. Made the right way, there are plenty of nutrients. Take pumpkin. Your body converts the beta carotene into vitamin A to boost eye and skin health. Toss in the pumpkin pie spices like cinnamon and nutmeg. You'll get even more antioxidants. One medium apple supplies about 20% of your daily fiber needs if you don't peel it. And beets, the nitrates can help lower blood pressure. Blend with fresh or frozen berries for sweetness. There are so many health benefits to berries. Overall, they can help protect you against heart attack and type 2 diabetes. And in the cooler months, frozen berries are a good option because they're less expensive than fresh. And blending in some oats not only makes your smoothie more filling, the soluble fiber can help lower cholesterol and decrease risk of heart disease. If you want to blend your smoothie with plant milk, consider adding chia or flax seeds to bump up the protein content. For the smoothest smoothies, Consumer Reports recommends the Nutribullet Smart Touch. It excels at pureeing and crushing ice. And bonus, it's easy cleanup. Marilyn Moritz, KSET 12 News. Hey, I want to let you know about an accident right now working. Southbound 35 at 410. This is on the Space Center camera. Looks like it is clearing very soon right now. The entrance ramp was blocked. Again, 35 South near Loop 410. Transguide is moving the cameras for us here. As things seem to be progressing, the call for this came out about 20, 25 minutes ago. Well, there goes a police vehicle, and you just saw the King Kong record. I don't know if that was involved in it, that big giant tow truck thing. Yeah, I mean, it's rare that we so. actually see the clearing happen, happen. instantaneously, right. but we may have just witness that and thank you very much over there trans guide for, yeah thank you for good morning trans guy yeah. camera yeah, work for us there yeah. so yeah. keeping us right. on top of things a lot going to be going on in the next 24 36 hours stormy weather yeah uh so we've got you know great weather today it's nice and, and cool out there grab a jacket yesterday was absolutely perfect i love this picture i mean it's just so tranquil with the the little adirondack chairs in the foreground and the table and that beautiful little church it looks like something out of a out of a picture and the blue skies in behind it. Now it's not probably going to be as vivid blue skies today. We've got a little bit more moisture coming in here aloft in the atmosphere. Still, it's going to be a nice day, although clouds are going to continue to kind of thicken up as the afternoon rolls on. 54 right now, 51 Helotus, low 40s in the hill country, up just a couple of notches. Yesterday we did end up at 47 degrees for a low temperature. We'll stay just a few above that. Still, obviously, jacket weather and lots of clear skies this morning. 
couple of clouds around here late morning and we'll make it up to 71 at noon top off at 80 today so just like the past couple of days basically 30 degrees from the low to the high and the clouds will continue to sort of thicken up as we go into the afternoon hours so here's the computer model and again by midday nothing going on more clouds later on this afternoon start to come on in here a couple of sprinkly showers tonight preceding this front. So we're going to see the, the moisture kind of come back on in here. And again, a few showers are going to be possible in the evening hours. Then we go into the overnight hours and the wee hours tomorrow morning. We start to see some of these showers and thunderstorms developing in the hill country. So this is going to be about this time tomorrow. And then as we go through the morning, more of those thunderstorms will continue to develop right around the heart of the morning commute. And that will continue to work the way off to the east in through morning hours. And then by noon, and early afternoon that continues to get on out of here. We start to clear on out. It is going to be windy in behind that, and that'll be the situation going into Saturday as well. As far as windy conditions. Now there is the chance for a few isolated, potentially severe storms, and this is going to be late tonight, more like in the overnight hours as those storms begin to develop high winds and hail, you know, a isolated tornado. You can't completely rule it out. Not very likely though. And then this in the overnight hours sort of transitions to the east. And so we'll have a couple of those, you know, one or two potential uh, stronger thunderstorms around here. A better chance later on in the day further off to the south and east. And as far as rain could have a couple of some decent downpours from this as well. Uh, greater amounts further up to the north and to the northeast well out of our area. But here in town we are looking at the scale anywhere from maybe half inch three quarters inch of rain. And of course in round any of those thunderstorms you could have some potentially heavier downpours just localized heavier downpours. But should be a, a decent amount in the northeastern half of our viewing area as uh, this rain moves on in here late, late tonight and through about noon tomorrow. 71 degrees today at noon, plenty of sunshine, more of those high clouds around here. Clouds continue to thicken up later on this afternoon, 80 high temperatures. So we are going to be somewhat on the above normal side. Then we'll see a couple of showers around here tonight. Front's going to come through tomorrow. And again, showers, thunderstorms, pretty likely in the morning and may have a couple of heavier downpours here and there. And then we're going to be clearing out quite nicely. It's going to be windy tomorrow afternoon, probably windy for football tomorrow night. Windy on Saturday, cooler Saturday, 73, upper 70 Sunday, Monday. Nice for trick or treating. Another chance for some rain on Tuesday. At least we have those chances and yeah. clear for Halloween at least. Yeah, we'll have some clouds around here, but it's going to be pretty good. But tomorrow morning is probably going to be a bit on the messy side. So plan to leave early right now for tomorrow. <laughs> Don't leave <laughs> yet you. for tomorrow. No. <laughs> get up earlier. We get your point, Mike. Yeah. Take a sleeping bag and 50, take a sleeping bag. 452, 52 degrees. And coming up next, how Skechers is making it known it wants nothing to do with Kanye West. Plus, how Rihanna will soon be a part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And here are your lottery numbers. Pick 3, 7, 2, 3, Fireball 0. Daily 4, 8, 5, 2, 6, Fireball 1. Looking over at Cash 5, 2, 6, 8, 21, 28. A lot of Texas, 3, 8, 14, 19, 32, 38. And your Powerball numbers, 19, 36, 37, 46, 56. Powerball 24, Power Play 2. 456, Rihanna is getting into the Marvel Cinematic Universe, plus Kanye West probably won't be wearing Skechers anytime soon. For layers of what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. This was my boy, Emmett Till. After decades in the making, the movie Till finally seeing the light of day. It tells the true story of Mamie Till Mobley, the mother turned activist of murdered Chicago teen Emmett Till, who was abducted and brutally killed in Mississippi in 1955. Whoopi Goldberg plays Emmett's grandmother, telling us this is an important story everyone needs to know. This is, this is... This is like the diary of Anne Frank. This is the truth. This is what happened. Know it. Recognize it. Don't think this is a good thing. Don't celebrate this. You want this not to happen again. Till opens in theaters across the country Friday. The shoe company Skechers making it clear it is not working with Kanye West. Skechers says in a statement that West showed up unannounced and without invitation at their corporate offices in Los Angeles. And he was escorted from the building. In the brief statement, the company pointed out twice that West was not invited. Earlier this week, Adidas ended its relationship with West over anti-Semitic comments he's made in recent weeks. 
It's official. Rihanna will have a song on the upcoming Black Panther Wakanda Forever soundtrack. It's called Lift Me Up, and we're told it's a tribute to the extraordinary life and legacy of Chadwick Boseman, star of the first Black Panther film, who died of cancer two years ago. Lift Me Up is Rihanna's first new music in six years. It'll drop on Friday. And happy birthday, John Cleese. The Monty Python star is 83 today. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Athens in ABC News, Los Angeles. Time now, 457 and 52 degrees for now. A lot of people are out of their homes this morning following a fire at this Northside apartment complex. Why fire officials say it could be days before they can return. And remember when you thought getting new shoes could make you faster? Well, now they actually can. We're going to tell you about the shoe that says it can boost walking speed by up to 250%. Also see a step wants to buy them. <laughs> it looks tempting. <laughs> Trans Guide right now, we had that problem in the 35410 area. It looked like it was clearing up. We'll confirm with Stephen Cavazos coming up. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And together we'll restore the right to choose for every woman in every state in America. The issue of abortion is proving to be a key issue in this year's midterm elections, how it will impact voters across the country. And the chilly weather will impact you this morning as you head out the door, especially your little ones as they head off to the bus stop or the car to head to school. Mike has your full forecast coming up, and by this time tomorrow, you may need an umbrella. Good morning, everybody. It is Thursday. It is October 27th. Thanks for joining us. Happy Thursday. I know uh, my little girl has an option of jackets. She has a hoodie, and she has a bigger jacket. She loses that at the, you know, pretty much in the morning hours, and then midday she has a hoodie, and then it's back to no jacket. We have all, all right? the details on Rooney's wardrobe choices. Do you have a program so we can follow along with that? I'm like, why do we have all these jackets after school and it's that was more very confusing <laughs> anyway yeah grab a jacket this morning and uh, then you won't need it by the afternoon make sure names in the little ones jackets 53 degrees right now lots of clear skies two points 46 so it's still very low but it has come up significantly compared to this time yesterday we are going to make it up to 80 later on today so again no jacket once again about a 30 degree swing from the low to the high later on this afternoon the aquifer dropped down two tenths of a foot and the allergens just have a low amount of mold showing up in the atmosphere so temperatures again are definitely chilly to cold depending on where you live we got some 40s out there in portions of the hill country right now 42 up the road in Comfort 48 Bernie stage 51 Halotus and 47 in Balverde. Now you look at the water vapor imagery. This is kind of the checking out the moisture upstairs in the atmosphere. Go back a couple of days ago and as this loops on through that kind of brownish and, and then darker the tan color and the very dark shade of gray that indicates really, really dry air in the atmosphere. But now as this loops through, notice how it's a little lighter gray. So Slightly more moisture, in other words, kind of a milky shade of, in the sky to start off. Then that moisture is going to continue to thicken up and we'll have more clouds later on today. So clear chilly this morning, then increasing clouds later on today. Couple of showers then tonight. That's going to be possible. Then we go into the overnight hours and into uh, tomorrow morning. We'll have some uh, showers, thunderstorms around here. Some of those could be on the strong, potentially severe side as the front works its way on through here. Just one or two of them, but we'll have to watch out for that. Also, some decent downpours can be expected, especially more rain to the northeast, lesser amounts down to the uh, the southwest. It's also going to be windy then. Things will clear out nicely in the afternoon. Windy in the afternoon. Weekend is setting up very nice. We'll have a few extra clouds, especially going into Sunday and Monday. Normal to coolish temperature, slightly below normal. Plenty of clouds, but uh, yeah, still very nice, and especially on Monday for Halloween. Then another front, another chance of rain in behind that. But we'll uh, get an outlook on what to expect and when the storms are going to be arriving. That's coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos. Good morning, sir. Anything cooking? Well, we did have that issue, Mike. Good morning, off of 35 near 410, but uh, that has already cleared out, so that's good news. Whatever it was, uh, was reported around 420 that crash. That is, I uh, was reported after 420 this morning and you can see from a lot of these shots at trans guy the roads are clear first responders were able to get that situation under control rather quickly so again thank you to those first responders and we hope everyone is doing okay out there but giving you a quick look around town you can see there's really not a lot to show you just some light traffic there at 281 at hildebrand as the morning is getting rolling but be on the look and of course as always there's going to be those active road closures and you can see them right there scattered around our map you want to make sure that you plan your commute ahead of time good news is right now roads are dry so you can take
take advantage of these empty roadways. And the same goes for those travel times. Pretty much green across the board. That journey from Bernie in the eastbound lanes of I-10 looks to be about 24 minutes at this hour. And it's 27 minutes on 281 southbound if you are traveling in from Bolverde. And I would say it's not too awful heading in from New Braunfels on I-35 south. 26 minutes is what you can expect at this hour. So right now the commute is off to a pretty great start. We get it back to Transguide 37 at Jones Avenue. We're going to continue to watch the roads closely and give you those updates right here on GMSA. Mark Stuff. Thank you, sir. People living at 29 apartment units out of their homes this morning after an electrical fire last night on the north side. That's according to the San Antonio Fire Department. Excuse me, SAFD responded to the 8,000 block of Broadway around 7 last night for a fire at a complex. Officials said the fire started due to an electrical wiring issue in the building's attic. Electricity has been cut off from that building, forcing people there to leave for now. SAFD estimates it will be at least a few days before they can return. Two units were primarily damaged as the fire was directly above them. Officials say it could take about a month before those tenants can return home. Damage is estimated to be worth at least $30,000. A fire involving stuffed animals shut down a highway and put residents in southeast Bear County on edge. So this was a view from Sky 12 over a fire at Donop Road and State Highway 18 yesterday. Fire crews say it started as a grass fire that spread to a warehouse full of stuffed animals. High wind and humidity made things more difficult for the more than 50 firefighters that responded. That corner of the building within three minutes um, where you can see over to the right, that was already on fire and fully involved and within about 10 minutes it had gone halfway through the building. No one was hurt. The cause of that fire is still under investigation. We have some late breaking news. San Antonio fire crews at the scene of a fire on the northeast side right now. It's happening in the 14,800 block of Topper Wine Road near Green Top Drive. Our Jonathan Goto is there with the latest. Good morning, Mark Stephanie. I'm located on the 14,800 block of Tarpa Wine here on the city's northeast side, where you can see San Antonio Fire Department responding to what appears to be a residential fire here across from an Easy Mart and Shell gas station on Tulper Wine Road. Now I'm going to step out of the camera. That way you can take a good look at what the scene is right now. We just have about 14 units responding to this residential fire. And of course, this is information that we are waiting to confirm. We are told by a police that this is a private residence. One person was inside but was able to safely evacuate. Of course, we're waiting to hear from a fire chief or a fire investigator on scene to confirm those details and also learn the cause of the fire here this morning. We're going to remain on scene and hopefully get those details for you coming up in the next half hour. Reporting live, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Early voting is in full swing. A race we are following closely out of Uvalde is the County Commissioner Precinct 2 race. Diana Alvaro Carew is running as a write-in candidate. She says she found her voice after surviving domestic violence and decided to use it after what she called failures on May 24th. Since that day, Alvaro Carew says she has been at nearly every city council and school board meeting fighting alongside families of victims for justice and accountability. Mariano Vargas sits in this seat for county commissioner and I made the decision then and there within a few weeks of, of that uh, knowledge and decided that I was going to run as a candidate. This is the first time Olvedo Carru has run for office like this. Javier Cáceres is also a first timer in the political ring running for the same position. We spoke with Cáceres last night. You can find both of their stories and other election news on our website at KSET.com. A third write-in candidate, Julio Valdez, declined to speak, and the incumbent, Mariano Vargas, did not respond to our request for an interview. Well, abortion continues to be a big issue for Americans in the midterm elections. While economy and inflation are top issues for most voters, a recent ABC News Washington Post poll found 63% of Americans consider abortion access their top issue. ABC's Rena Roy shows us how this could impact the election. With just days to go until the high stakes midterm elections, Keep your rosaries off my Abortion is taking center stage. I believe that innocent human life is worthy of the protection of our laws. I think those decisions are made between the woman, her family, her doctor, and her 
faith. Since the Supreme Court overturned Roe versus Wade, at least 14 states have seized nearly all abortion services. I'm voting to have a choice in what happens to my body. I am very, very much pro-life, and I'm so glad that it went back to the states. In Georgia, a six-week ban is in place. The contentious race there between Democrat incumbent Senator Raphael Warnock and anti-abortion rights candidate Herschel Walker could potentially tip the balance of the Senate. Walker denying allegations that he paid for a former girlfriend's abortion. Did you ever, to your knowledge, give money to pay for the cost of an abortion? No. In Kansas, voters overwhelmingly decided to protect a woman's right to choose. It was the first state to give the public a chance to weigh in on abortion rights through a referendum. Kentucky will have a similar measure at the polls. They're voting on whether or not to change their constitution to add a provision that would say uh, that she cannot secure or protect the right uh, to an abortion in their state constitution. California, Vermont, Michigan also expected to have abortion on the ballot. Some lawmakers like Republican Senator Lindsey Graham taking things one step further. He's introduced a bill that would impose a nationwide ban on most abortions after 15 weeks of pregnancy. There's folks who have the desire to go even further than just overturning Roe. They want to see further restrictions on abortion access. And so those folks are also going to turn out uh, in mass because of this issue. President Biden probably promising Democrats will protect access to abortion under federal law if they win enough seats in November. And together we'll restore the right to choose for every woman in every state in America. So vote. You got to get out the vote. We can do this if we vote. But historically, the party of the president often loses seats in the midterms. So it's a very tall order for the Democrats to keep control of the House. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. It's now 511, 52 degrees. Apple is having to change the way it charges its smartphones. We're going to tell you why and how it affects your phone. And some residents are frustrated with delays in a Bear County drainage ditch project, and they're concerned about flooding. We'll tell you when the Bear County Public Works Department plans to finish the job. And taking a look outside with live cam, if you like cold mornings, we have good news. It's 52 degrees again, and it's expected to warm up nicely, but there are rain chances in the forecast. We'll be checking in with Mike shortly. Just about 515, we're expecting rain in the 10-day forecast, and it may be good for the drought. However, it's also raising concerns for some Bear County homeowners. The issue isn't how much rainfall, but where it's going. Roger Rodriguez has lived in the Bear County neighborhood by Highway 90 for nearly 40 years, and he says irrigation canals and ditches once redirected water overflow from neighbors' properties. Now, however, this county-owned retention ditch is ineffective. They believe it's part of the reason water filled with fecal matter has destroyed walls, furniture, and family pictures inside their home. And it's not just me who experienced all this damage and all the all the issues. It's also my neighbor. And we took her concerns to the Bear County Public Works Department, and they are reporting that workers are in the process of obtaining a contractor to finish the remaining work that should be complete this fiscal year. We will continue to monitor this story as it develops. 515, still 52 degrees. Google Workspace plans to significantly increase storage space for some users while you will like the new price of the service. Plus, engineers say they've invented the world's fastest shoes. You won't believe how much faster they can make you walk. Mucinex Night Shift fights your worst nighttime symptoms so you can get to sleep and wake up ready to go. How could you? So rise above the misery. Wake up to a new you. Today, you're back and ready to go. This will not stay. Oh, huh? oh God, nuts. With Mucinex Night Shift, it's not cold and flu season. It's always comeback season. Facing expensive vitamin C creams with dull results? Olay brightens it up with Olay Vitamin C. Gives you two times brighter skin. Hydrates better than the $400 cream. Shop at Olay.com. When it's go time, I don't let constipation stop me. New great tasting Dolcolax Chewy Fruit Bites work naturally with the water in your body in as little as 30 minutes. So you can go fast, go gently, and go on with life. New Dolcolax Chewy Fruit Bites put you comfortably in control. 
519, welcome back on your Thursday morning. How are we looking on the road so far, Stephen? It's been pretty quiet. We did have that issue off of 35. That's already cleared out, but we do have some uh, road work to take that's taking place. Let's get you to the trans guide shot because uh, this is actually off of 410 near Ingram Road. You can see those flashing lights out of the distance. Uh, this should be wrapping pretty soon, but just be on the lookout. Of course, we do have our tech crews that are working to improve the roadways, and that is a 24 seven job. So we want to give them plenty of room, plenty of time to get the job done. Of course, we want to make sure you also arrive to where you need to be on time and safely. So just be on the lookout for that. I'll be watching it throughout the morning, but let's get you to the map. Uh, we did have that issue issue off of 35, which has already cleared out. But as I mentioned earlier, there are going to be some of those active road closures that are going to be taking place throughout the day. So here's one of them off of, of FM 1535 Northwest Military Highway. It did begin on Monday, October 24th at utility work, and we should see that hopefully wrap up by Friday. That's tomorrow, October 28th, 7 in the morning to 6 in the evening. Expect single lane closures in both directions. That'll be there from Loop 1604 to Hebner Road. Uh, but let's get you back on that rotation from Trans Guide 281 at Hildebrand. Thankfully, the commute has been off to a pretty decent start as we inch close closer to 6 a.m., but Mike Osterhage, the roads are dry right now, so that's a good thing. Yeah, and we keep talking about how tomorrow morning it's going to be a different situation. We're going to talk more about that in just a moment. Yesterday was absolutely beautiful to be outside. This great picture, yeah, a beautiful day working out on my acre, and they are helping too. Not to question your uh, your caption there, but doesn't look like they're doing much help there, unless that's resting after helping. Anyway, a beautiful picture. Scan the QR code and uh, send us in some of those KSAC Connect pictures of your pets, either relaxing or working or whatever the case may be. Lots of clear skies this morning. Another cold one. Grab a coat. 40s hill country, low 50s here in town. We're up maybe a couple of degrees compared to yesterday. Still very dry air, but notice how these numbers are getting a little bit closer to 60. The threshold now it's still comfortable out there, but they are up, you know, five, six, seven, eight, nine degrees compared to this time yesterday. Humidity is up uh, or dew points are up 13 degrees compared to this time yesterday. Still comfortable, but humidity will continue to sort of increase preceding the front moving through overnight early tomorrow morning. We'll have clear skies this morning. We'll bottom out at 50 here in town and then warm up nicely. Of course, like we did yesterday up to 71 at noon. A couple more clouds here and there and then more clouds will continue to sort of fill in as the afternoon rolls on. We're going to make it up to 80 for a high temperature today and then also going to be slightly on the breezy side today. Very windy tomorrow. Here's computer model going into uh, later on tonight. Clouds increase. A couple of showers going to be popping up here or there in the uh, evening hours and later on tonight overnight. Then early tomorrow morning, that's when we'll start to see showers and thunderstorms developing and those will continue to work their way across the area throughout the commute tomorrow and through most of the morning up through roughly noon and then things begin to clear on out and we'll have windy conditions once those things clear on out. Also could have this is basically overnight late late tonight in the wee hours the chance for a couple of uh, stray severe storms and then that will transition across the area as the storms move across in the morning hours. High winds and hail are going to be the biggest threats. Isolated tornado can't completely rule it out, but not very likely though. 71 degrees at and again, they'll, they'll just be one or two of those that possibility to reach severe levels tomorrow morning. 71 at noon, sunny skies and then a high temperature today up to 80 with increasing clouds. Couple of showers around tonight. Tomorrow morning then we'll have showers and some thunderstorms around here. Pretty good chance for some rain and as far as rainfall amounts here in town, um, half inch inch of rain is going to be possible. Obviously some localized heavier amounts with any of those thunderstorms that do pop up. The majority of the rain kind of broad brush is going to be further northeast, lesser amounts down to the uh, southwest. Nice looking weekend, normal to slightly on the cool side and good trick or treating weather. All right, so be on alert next uh, 24 hours or so. Yeah, really starting late, late tonight and then tomorrow through noon, pretty All much. Right. We'll be prepared. Yeah. Thank you, Mike. 523, 52 degrees. And up next, we're going to have some new music from Adele. Here are your lottery numbers. Pick three, seven, two, three, Fireball Zero. Daily four, eight, five, two, six, Fireball One. And then looking ahead to Catch Five, we have two, six, eight, 21, 28. Lotto Texas, three, eight, 14, 19, 32, 38. Your Powerball numbers. 19, 36, 37, 46, 56, Powerball 24, Power Play 2. 
today's Tech Bytes, Apple is changing its charging. The company says it will rework the primary cable port on iPhones so that it's compatible with universal USB-C charging. The change comes in order to comply with new European Union rules taking effect in 2024. Google has good news for users of its Workspace Individual plan. They're getting a big storage upgrade from 15 gigabytes to one terabyte at no extra cost. Google says the upgrade will happen automatically. Finally, the world's fastest shoes. They're called Moonwalkers and they're supposed to boost your walking speed by 250%. They have eight wheels powered by an electric motor. The company is hoping to have the shoes on the market by next year at around $1,400 a pair. Now for that price, I really hope the shoes aren't Velcro. Otherwise, they'd really be a ripoff. Those are your tech bites. Have a great day. <laughs> That's cute. <laughs> that one's okay. Yeah. That one's okay. As if he cares what we think. <laughs> 527, a music icon prepares to return to the stage and a new movie marks a grim anniversary. Here's CNN's David Daniel with the Hollywood Minute. How can one become so bounded by choices that somebody else made? I Drink Wine is the latest music video from Adele. The Grammy-winning singer doesn't seem too happy in the clip, especially for someone floating down a lazy river in a custom Valentino gown sipping wine. The superstar launches her rescheduled and redesigned Weekends with Adele Las Vegas residency at Caesars Palace November 18th. Parkland has been here. The church in Charleston, they were here. When there's a shooting, we text each other because you just know what each other is feeling. Four years ago today, a white supremacist killed 11 people and wounded six others during morning services at Tree of Life Synagogue in Pittsburgh, the deadliest anti-Semitic attack in U.S. history. Now a documentary looks at the shooting, the survivors, what has changed and what has not changed. A Tree of Life, the Pittsburgh Synagogue shooting premiered this week on HBO and HBO Max. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. 529, 52 degrees. More questions are being answered in the St. Louis school shooting. What the shooter's family is now saying about how the suspect got access to the gun and ammunition that he used. And you may know this by now, but you are going to pay more for Halloween candy this year. We'll tell you how much more and why most Americans aren't really scared of that price hike. They've done everything that they could possibly have done, uh, but sometimes that's not enough. The family of the 19-year-old suspect accused of opening fire in a St. Louis, Missouri high school revealed how he got access to his firearm that he used to kill a student and a teacher. Outside with live cam, right now we're down to about 52 degrees as we look back towards downtown. Mike says some stormy weather is in his forecast, and that's coming up. Good morning, everybody. It's Thursday, the 27th. Thanks for joining us, and we do need that rain, so let's go ahead and check in with Mike. When could this happen, Mike? This time tomorrow. We'll start to see some showers developing late, late tonight, but pretty much this time tomorrow is when we'll see the uh, showers and thunderstorms developing in the uh, hill country and working the way across the area. But for right now, it is another gorgeous morning. We have got lots of clear skies out there. We have got uh, cool to cold temperatures, 53 in town. That number, dew point 46, still well below 60, and that's what you like to see. But it has started to come up, and it will continue to sort of creep up a little bit setting the stage for uh, some of those showers and could actually see some decent rain around here by uh, when it's all said and done by about noon tomorrow. 42 in Comfort, 48 Bandera, Bernie Stage, and 50 up the road in New Braunfels. Again, humidity all around the area remains low, but these numbers will continue to go up throughout the, the course of the day. Mold is on the low side. Of course, the updated count is going to be coming out about, uh, say, 7, 7.30 this morning. 71 degrees at noon. A uh, lot of sunshine to start off. A couple of higher clouds around here. Then a few more higher clouds. They'll sort of start to thicken up later on this afternoon. 80 high temperature. It is going to be kind of breezy. Southeasterly wind, 15, 20 miles per hour. And then tonight, a lot more clouds, a couple of showers around here. More rain will develop than in the overnight hours. So we'll talk about the exact timing of some of these showers and thunderstorms, how much rain to expect, when it's going to clear out, what the weekend looks like, and of course, still an update on the trick-or-treat forecast. That and a whole lot more coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, what's going on on the pavement today, Stephen? Hey, well, not a whole lot, Mike, and always good news here when there is a quiet start to the morning, but of course, the road are dry right now and we're going to be keeping a close eye on things, especially for tomorrow morning's commute. But right now I'd say that it is a perfect time. To take advantage because uh, just take a look there at 35 at South Cross. 
We do have a few more vehicles out there, and it looks like we may even have a stalled vehicle out there uh, off of 35 near Brooklyn, but really not causing issues for drivers. And as people are getting that commute going, really not going to find any other problems out there. We did have one incident off of I-35 that has already cleared out near 410 Space Center, but let's get you to the map because what we are just going to take a look at is some of those are some of those road closures, as you can see it right there on our screen. Uh, but we're not really seeing any delays, no red, no yellow, orange, so things are pretty green right now, but give it about an hour and that will likely change. So again, uh, if you have to head out the door in the next few moments, you will be in luck. But let's check out those travel times. If you're going to be heading into the Alamo City from any of these communities, it's still pretty green from Seguin on I-10 westbound. 29 minutes is what you can expect at this hour. A little more than half an hour on 87 if you are traveling in the northbound lanes from Lavernia. And for our friends down in Floresville, it's 27 minutes if you plan to hit the roads and head to San Antonio. But uh, just take your time out the door this morning. Uh, 35 at Ritterman. Things have been off to a quiet start but we're going to continue to give you those updates on road closures and keep a close eye on things throughout the morning. Mark stuff. Thank you, Stephen. Updating late breaking news. San Antonio fire crews have been at a fire on the city's northeast side early this morning. It's in the 14,800 block of Topper Ryan Road near Green Top Drive. Our Jonathan Cotto is there now with more. Good morning, Mark and Stephanie. I'm located here on the 14,800 block of Topper Wine Road on the city's northeast side, right across from an Easy Mart and a Shell gas station on your screen right now. That's a house fire. We know San Antonio Fire Department responding, uh, trying to put out the flames here at this house. We are being told that there was a man, an elderly man believed to be in his 70s inside that home that has sustained minor injuries as he was attempting to put out the flames himself, but has been since safely evacuated. We uh, originally got the call for about 14 units as you can see all hands on deck on this fire here this morning but again we are waiting to confirm those details here this morning from fire commander or fire investigator here on scene and also learn the cause of the fire here this morning but you can as you can tell it's a busy morning for san antonio fire department and we'll get back with you in the next half hour with those details reporting jonathan Cotto, ksat 12 news and this morning, we are expecting a report into the shooting at Robb Elementary. It's coming from the director of the Department of Public Safety. So far, we don't know what is in the report. The Public Safety Commission meeting is holding a hearing at 9 this morning. State Senator Roland Gutierrez and a number of Uvalde families plan to testify. We will also have a crew there. This morning, there's disturbing new information about the suspect in that deadly school shooting in St. Louis on Monday. ABC's Rihanna Nally has more. The family of the teenager accused of killing a student and teacher inside this St. Louis high school this week is revealing new details about the suspect, saying his mother just this month worked with police to take away his gun. She is heartbroken for the families of this incident, for the school. According to police, the suspect's mother called them on October 15th, saying she wanted her son's firearm taken away. But police say the 19-year-old was lawfully permitted to have the weapon, so they did not remove it. Instead, a third party took the gun. They uh, worked with our department to transfer that to, a, to an adult who could legally possess one. Investigators did not identify the third party, and they are still trying to determine how the teen got the gun back. It's the same AR-15 style rifle he allegedly used to open fire inside his former high school, killing sophomore Alex Bell and health teacher Jean Kushka. Police are not revealing how the gunman broke into the school, fearing it could inspire copycats. The school says the doors were locked. Authorities say the gunman had more than 600 rounds of ammunition when he died in a shootout with officers. His family says he had a history of mental health struggles. They say they had committed him to a psychiatric facility multiple times and even monitored his mail. They've done everything that they could possibly have done, uh, but sometimes that's not enough. Rhiannon and Alley, ABC News, New York. Advisors for the FDA have delayed their discussion over a potential over-the-counter birth control pill. Opil is a non-estrogen contraceptive that women can take once a day to prevent pregnancy. Right now must be prescribed, but Perigo has submitted the drug for over-the-counter approval. If approved, Opil would be the first daily birth control pill available over-the-counter. Perigo said that the FDA postponed the meeting so it could review additional information. The U.S. Justice Department is asking the Supreme Court to reject a legal theory pushed by Trump supporters. The Biden administration is arguing against what is called the independent state legislature doctrine. 
Supporters say state legislatures should be able to set rules in federal elections without interference from the courts. Democrats are concerned that Republicans will use the theory in legal challenges around the midterms. Unless the Supreme Court resolves the issue, they fear it could trigger more lawsuits in 2024. Elon Musk posted a video Wednesday showing him strolling into Twitter's headquarters ahead of tomorrow's deadline to close his $44 billion deal to buy the company. Musk also changed his Twitter profile to refer to himself as Chief Twit and his location to Twitter's San Francisco headquarters, which he once suggested might be better suited as a homeless shelter. The video showed him carrying a sink through the lobby as he tweeted, entering Twitter HQ, let that sink in. We're not making this up, folks. A court has given Musk until tomorrow to close his April agreement to acquire the company. I saw a note on the wires yesterday. It said banks began sending $13 billion in cash to back Elon Musk's takeover Twitter. People familiar with the matter say it signed the deal. is set to close soon. $13 wow. billion in cash. It's crazy. That takes a few pallets and trucks to move. Yeah, a little. <laughs> Time now, 540 and 52 degrees for now. Cost of Halloween candy is up like everything else this year. Might not really be scaring away Americans, though. Can you guess how much we are expected to spend? And a quick look outside with live cam this morning. Starting cool again at 52 degrees. We have some rain chances, but weekend is looking kind of good. We're going to check in with the details with Mike later on. Welcome back. It's 543 in your morning consumer headlines. Ford is putting the brakes on plans to develop fully autonomous vehicles. Now, Ford says the driving tech company Argo AI will be shutting down. The automaker planned to develop the autonomous driving technology with Volkswagen through the startup. But according to Ford, it lost more than $2 billion on its investment. Volkswagen also announced it was ending its interest in the company. Both automakers have announced efforts to help workers impacted by the decision find other employment. Consumers will have to scare up a little extra change for Halloween candy this year. The cost of chocolate bars and the like are expected to be 14% higher compared to last year, according to a report from S&P Global Market Intelligence. That equates to an extra $2 per bag on average. Despite this, Americans are not being frightened away. The National Retail Federation says consumers are expected to spend more than $10 billion this Halloween. That's about half a billion more than last year. Of course, you got to probably factor the pandemic into that, too. I think so. Very costly there. 544, 52 degrees. And are you looking for a fun new pet at home? Well, the San Antonio Humane Society will have that for you coming up next. Well, finally, we got this little one because it was a whiny little baby there for a minute to kind of quiet down. Kim, hey, welcome back. I know, Long time thank no you. See. I'm so glad to be back. Who is the Yay. little baby that you're snuggling there? This is Benny. Uh, Benny is a two-month-old little domestic short hair kitty cat. Um, yeah, there. see, there we go. <laughs> there Telling he you good morning. Again, so. Okay, it's warm, it's dry, you're being cuddled. What are you complaining about there, little see, guy? I don't know. See, I want to find my home. That's what I want. Yeah, find my sweet, forever home. Sweet little guy. So what y'all <laughs> got going guy. on? So we have a great promo going on. It's Sosie and Sasha's mm -hmm. uh, adoption special. It's two kitties. And all of our adoption fees are waived starting October 28th, 29th, and 30th for all of our cat and kittens. So coming up this Thursday, Friday. Friday and Saturday. Yes. <laughs> 29th and 30th, uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Yes, I'll get my dates yes. right. So, yes, Friday, Saturday, it's all for all cats? All cats and kittens. Everything? Everything. So okay. Come on out and see us. So, you're going to be free coming up this week. Did yeah. you know that? <laughs> What do, you think of, what do you think about that? You want to you want to shout out about that? Well, if you'd like more information about that and this little guy who's got the most beautiful little eyes on him, head on over there to the uh, San Antonio Humane Society, 4804 Fredericksburg Road, 226-7461. You did good on TV. Mm -hmm. Adorable. Good to see Kim back. Yeah, good to see her. Time now, 548. Let's check on traffic. What's the latest, Stephen? Not a lot over here. And also, Mike is like Dr. Doolittle, getting that cat to just start talking. So, <laughs> <laughs> That's next show. Yes, but yeah, uh, hopefully uh, we get to see some of those adoptions. But right now, we are seeing some light traffic here as we take it to Transguide 410 at FM 78. Uh, not a lot to show you out there, and that's always good news. Uh, if you are going to be heading out the door on your 281 at Bitters, be prepared for just a little bit more traffic there. And of course, also at 35 at South Cross. Now, one of the things that I mentioned is we always have those quiet mornings. You saw 
trail there that looks like a stall. That's actually in the northbound lanes of 35. Pardon me, forgot to get to that on our map. But uh, one of the things that you see there are going to be those road closures. And I just want you guys to be prepared for what you can expect over the next few days, at least over the next few nights. Uh, this is something I mentioned yesterday where there is a lot of work that takes place. Striping work will continue right there along State Highway 46 in Comal County. Now, keep in mind that also began on October 24th. It is overnight, but it's just going to take a little while to complete, at least up until November 4th. We know that will end around 5 in the morning. Single lane closures in both directions from Old Bernie Road to Bentwood Drive. But you know where to find that information. KSAT.com slash traffic at the bottom of the screen if you are on your mobile app. But let's take you back here to Transguide. It has been a pretty quiet morning so far, guys. That's right. good news. Quick shout out to the Humane Society. Yeah. Happy 70th. Wow. Happy just celebrated that Tuesday night. I had the honor of being the master of ceremonies out there, and they had some great stories about, I mean, they have a lot of adoptions out there, but a couple of years ago, they built a new medical facility, and some of the things that they've done and how they've been able to help some of the animals with it's, this. It's making a difference. Oh, my God. He was telling us some stories during the break that uh, they're, they're tough to hear, but they're success stories. Yeah, yeah and even the, the vets that are there were sitting at my table, and I looked over, I was like, You what? did that? Like, yeah, wow. and they, they were even emotional about it as people were so again happy happy anniversary to the uh, very nice society. happy anniversary so, guys uh here's a couple of pets i love this picture because i was a huge oh. fan of cheech and chong in the day so there's cheech and, excuse me uh yeah willie nelson and keanu aka cheech and chong How ready for halloween cute. those <laughs> are so cute they awesome. look like they're smiling like look at that i know it looks <laughs> <laughs> I mean, especially the expression of that was face so We're having a dog day <laughs> afternoon man <laughs> <laughs> nice cheech and chong boys over there yeah. scan the qr code send in your uh, pictures so all right got a nice another beautiful morning um gonna be another fantastic afternoon but we will see more clouds moving on in here throughout the day unlike the past couple of days when it was nothing but just blue skies. Yesterday afternoon was so nice to be outside. We'll drop down to 50 when it's all said and done this morning here in town. And then again, a few more clouds later on in the morning and then more clouds can begin to kind of move on in here later on this afternoon. 80 high temperature today. Now here's the computer model. This, I think, does a great job depicting what's going to be going on in the next uh, really 24, 30 hours. We have a lot of sunshine this morning and early afternoon. More clouds come in here this evening. And then tonight, just a couple of scattered showers are going to start to pop up. Then late tonight, in the wee hours, we'll really start to see more developing out there to the west. And this is going to be then by tomorrow morning. Showers, a few thunderstorms around, and some pretty hefty localized. There could be a couple of your downpours, obviously, and there's also going to be the chance for some of these to perhaps reach severe levels with high winds and hail. Now, outside chance of an isolated tornado can't be completely ruled out. Not very likely, though, but this is going to be going on through the morning commute and in through most of the morning tomorrow and then finally clearing out from west to east by late morning, noontime, and then continuing to get on out of here. And then it's going to be windy in behind that. Now, as far as the severe threat, and this is basically in the overnight hours, hill country, and this moves across the area in through the morning hours. Again, just a couple of them. Like I said, high winds, hail being the biggest threats. Rainfall. Now, as far as the overall lesser amount southwest, more up to the northeast, maybe half three quarter inch of rain in and around town. Perhaps obviously localized uh, thunderstorms would dump more rain, you know, in, in some spots there. So could see a good bit amount of rain as far as uh, this is concerned tomorrow. And then again, it's going to be in the morning hours. So just if you need to plan ahead now that you're going to have to leave early tomorrow because of the, uh, the threat for some rain. 71 at noon, sunny skies, high temperature today is going to make it up to 80 with again, increasing clouds, couple of showers around this evening, then overnight and pretty much in the wee hours tomorrow morning is when those thunderstorms are going to get going around here. Um, high winds, hail, biggest threats, again, some potentially severe and then couple of pretty decent downpours as well. 75, windy tomorrow, windy on Saturday, only 73. And we'll start off in the low 50s, both Saturday, Sunday mornings. Monday looks like a, a great day. A lot of clouds, though. Another chance of rain by Tuesday. Rain by Tuesday. Things yeah. that we need, though. Right. To, uh, best chance of rain, obviously, and tomorrow. And again, some heavy amounts here and there with some of those thunderstorms. So watch out for that.
Yes, sir. Yeah. Thank you, Mike. 553, 52 degrees. Look at your winning lotto numbers. We have pick three, seven, two, three, fireball zero, daily four, eight, five, two, six, fireball one. Cash five, two, six, eight, 21, 28, lotto Texas, three, eight, 14, 19, 32, 38. If you're just now waking up, no one won Powerball again. It's up to $800 million. There are last night's numbers. Mega is at $64 million. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, the new read on the state of the economy. What the numbers out this morning could tell us about where we are right now and what it all means for the possibility of a recession moving forward. And we have an ABC News exclusive, Friends star Matthew Perry sitting down with Diane Sawyer on his hard-fought battle with addiction, his near-death experience, and how he hopes to help people by telling his story. Then there are the Halloween pumpkin hacks that have been seen by millions. But do they really work? Blair is going to put them to the test. And Deals and Steals coming up right here on GMA. Ahead the next hour, GMSA Shoes with Speed, what one shoemakers hope to achieve with a new design of shoe that has eight wheels. China has an announcement for the U.S. that involves working together. What their leader is saying about how it helped both countries and the world. Transguide right now, stalled vehicle upper level of 35 north at Brooklyn. That's just one thing that Stephen is keeping his eye on right now. No accidents, but cross your fingers. We'll see what happens in the next couple of minutes. A house fire left one person trapped, how she was able to escape, and what the San Antonio Fire Department is saying about how the blaze started. And taking a look outside with a live cam this Thursday morning, a nice 52 degrees out there, and we're expecting things to warm up nicely once again. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And a good morning to you. It is Thursday, October 27th. We made it to Thursday. It's been a beautiful weather week, but we also need that rain. We do. And Mike says by this time tomorrow morning, things could be completely different around here. Yeah, we've got a uh, front moving on through late, late tonight, early tomorrow morning, and yeah, it's going to produce some showers and thunderstorms. Some could be on the, uh, the strong side, and we'll talk about that, and some decent rain. So that's good news, but the timing of it is going to be right in the, the heart of the morning commute tomorrow. Today, Another just fantastic day. We're starting off on the cool side this morning. Cool to chilly or just downright cold. Lots of clear skies out there. 52 in town, 45 Bulverde, Bernie Stage, low 40s in the hill country. And won't need a jacket by later on today. Once again, we're going to be gaining about 30 degrees between the morning low and the afternoon high temperature. Molds on the low side. Update account is going to come out in about, uh, say, an hour, hour and a half or so. 50 this morning will bottom out. That's here in town. And then warm up nicely. We will have a, kind of a milky shade to the sky this morning and then a few more high clouds. Clouds will sort of continue to kind of fill in and, and move on in here throughout the day. We'll be in the low 70s at noon and then top off at 80 later on today. Wind is going to be out of the southeast. Bit of a breeze out there, 15, 20 miles per <clears> hour. <throat> Tonight we will see a couple of showers uh, kind of moving into the hill country, just a few of them here and there. And then again, like I said, overnight and tomorrow morning is when we'll see the uh, more rain move on in potential for some strong to severe storms. Get that all sorted out. Who can see how much rain and of course what's in store for we the need. weekend coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, what's going on? Well, we still have uh, this stall vehicle right here, Mike. 35, that upper level there at Brooklyn. Uh, earlier we saw some flashing lights. Looked like a Texot Hero truck was helping this driver out, but uh, that vehicle is still out there. Unfortunately, it's in a pretty tricky spot there. This again in the northbound lanes of 35. You can see that traffic is moving in both lanes of direction without any trouble, but because it's such a busy spot, you have to watch out. Not sure if anyone is there, but uh, hopefully they can uh, get some resolution and we can see that vehicle uh, obviously start working again and we can obviously get traffic moving just fine, but uh, no problems everywhere else. It's actually been a pretty quiet start to this Thursday morning. We take you to the map and you can see that there are those active road closures, which we'll mention a little bit later, but I would just say take it slow right now. Take it easy. Uh, now we tend to see a lot more vehicles out there as the morning commute does get going. Let's take you right here to the those travel times because if you plan on hitting the road from any of these communities, it is getting just a little bit busier. I 10 if you are traveling in the eastbound lanes from Bernie 24 minutes at this hour 281 southbound. There was a little bit of a delay that was building up, but we're back down to the green with 26 minutes and right now 25 on I 35 southbound heading in from New Braunfels. So things don't look too bad there, but we take it back to Transguide. Hopefully we'll have a better shot here at 35 upper level at Brooklyn. And uh, of course, just watch out for any salt vehicles that you may encounter on the roadways. Mark stuff.
Thank you, Steve. And San Antonio fire crews have been at the scene of a fire on the northeast side early this morning. It's in the 14,800 block of Topper Wine Road, and Jonathan Cotto has more. Good morning, Mark and Stephanie. Busy morning for San Antonio Fire Department responding to the 14,800 block of Topper Wine Road here on the city's northeast side. You can see there on your screen the house that was involved in this morning's fire. San Antonio firefighters attempting to put out the flames earlier this morning. Now things are starting to wrap up, but we are learning a man believed to be in his 70s was uh, safely evacuated from his home. He did sustain minor injuries uh, to his back as he was attempting to put out the flames himself before firefighters arrived here. He was taken to the hospital as a precaution given his age. But again, the situation here is under control. Firefighters are starting to wrap things up. But EMS and uh, firefighters are still here, you know, keeping an eye out on those hot spots. We are waiting to speak with Fire Command just to confirm that information. This is information that's been coming to us in passing. But of course, we're going to have all those details and we're going to stay on top of this story in the next half hour and give you all those updates and reporting from the city's northeast side. Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. People living in 29 apartments are out of their homes this morning after an electrical fire on the north side last night. That's according to San Antonio Fire. SAFD responded to the 8,000 block of Broadway around 7 last night for a fire at that complex. Officials say the fire started to an electrical issue in the with the wiring in the building's attic. Electricity has been shut off from the building, forcing people out for now. Fire Department estimates it will be at least a few days before tenants can return. Two units were primarily damaged as the fire was directly above them. Officials say it could take about a month before those tenants can return home. Damage is estimated to be worth about $30,000. San Antonio firefighters say a girl was trapped on a roof as flames spread around her home. This was on Comet Manor around 7 last night. That's not far from Loop 410 and Ray Ellison Boulevard on the southwest side. Now, crews believe those flames first started in the kitchen. The girl says smoke alarms woke her up. She then climbed out of her window and onto the roof to alert crews that she was there, and that's where she was rescued. Four people live at that home. However, firefighters say she was the only one home at the time. A fire involving stuffed animals shut down a highway and put residents in Southeast Bear County on edge. This was the view from Sky 12 over a fire at Donup Road and Highway 18 yesterday. Fire crews say it started as a grass fire that spread to a warehouse full of stuffed animals. High winds and humidity made things a little more difficult for the more than 50 firefighters that responded. That corner of the building within three minutes um, where you can see over to the right, that was already on fire and fully involved. And within about 10 minutes, it had gone halfway through the building. No one was hurt. The cause of the fire is still under investigation. China's leader says they are willing to work with the U.S. in the new era to benefit both countries and the world. That's according to Chinese state broadcaster CCTV. The country's leader added that strengthening communication and cooperation will help promote more stability and certainty. In recent years, U.S.-China relations have soured over issues like trade and tech wars, Taiwan and COVID-19. And more recently, China's refusal to condemn Russia's war in Ukraine. European natural gas prices tumbling, falling 20% since last week, also by a whopping 71% since hitting a record high in late August. It's a surprising turn of events for a region that has been hammered by eye-watering price rises in one of its most important energy sources this year. Dozens of ships carrying liquefied natural gas are lining up at sea off the Spanish coast to deliver their cargo. And let's say mild weather and successful EU efforts are, are to thank to fill gas storage facilities. And the countdown to the midterm election is here, and many candidates are speaking out. Pennsylvania Senate candidate John Fetterman now responding to critics who have raised concern about his health after his recent debate performance. And Georgia Senate candidate Herschel Walker addressing a new allegation that he paid for another woman's abortion. Here's ABC's Ike Jachi. A second woman has now come forward, claiming Georgia Senate candidate Herschel Walker paid for her to have an abortion. The anonymous woman spoke via speakerphone at a news conference. He encouraged me to have an abortion. 
and gave me the money to do so. The woman says she got pregnant in 1993, claiming Walker pressured her to get an abortion. She provided what she describes as evidence of the relationship, but no evidence of the actual abortion. ABC News has not verified her claims, which Walker denies. I'm done with this foolishness. I've already told people this is a lie and I'm not going to entertain to continue to carry a lie alone. Walker is a staunch opponent of abortion rights. Earlier this month, he denied paying for another woman's abortion, the mother of one of his children. She provided receipts from a clinic and a copy of a check she claims Walker gave to her to pay for the procedure. Meanwhile, in the hotly contested Pennsylvania Senate race, John Fetterman on the campaign trail with musician Dave Matthews last night in Pittsburgh. Fetterman bluntly acknowledged his lingering auditory issues from a recent stroke, calling Tuesday's debate against Republican Mehmet Oz not easy. I may not get every, every word the right way, but I will always do the right thing in Washington, D.C. Dr. Oz, in his first appearance since the debate, did not comment on Fetterman's difficulties. He's also standing by his position on abortion that made immediate headlines after the debate. I want women, doctors, local uh, political leaders, letting the democracy that's always allowed our nation to thrive to put the best ideas forward so states can decide for themselves. In the meantime, President Biden is trying to focus on the economy. Biden announcing a plan to crack down on so-called junk fees that make everything from bank transactions to cable TV bills more expensive. Meanwhile, former President Trump is scheduling more rallies for Republican candidates. He'll visit Iowa, Ohio, Pennsylvania, and Florida before Election Day. Ike Ajachi, ABC News, Washington. And happening today, the Workforce Solutions Alamo is hosting an inclusive job fair in recognition of National Disability Employment Awareness Month. Workforce Solutions Alamo is looking for job seekers with and without disabilities. It will be from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. at 3652 Blue Mill Road. Some participating employers include Amazon, San Antonio Food Bank, the Dizium, and much more. So if you plan on going out there, you are encouraged to bring an updated resume and photo ID. The San Antonio Independent School District is also holding an in-person job fair for skilled trades. It'll be from 1 to 4 p.m. located at the SAISD Alamo Convocation Center at 110 Tuleta. They're looking to hire carpenters, painters, roofers, electricians, and more. On-site interviews will be available. Right now, 610, 52 degrees. And could we soon be wearing the world's fastest shoes? Still ahead, how they will boost your walking speed and when they could be released. Blood concerns raised by some Bear County homeowners. Why the issue isn't rain, but rather where all that water goes. Another nice weather day here in San Antonio, but we're starting off chilly again. Grab that jacket. We'll be right back. Welcome back, 614. We're expecting rain in our forecast, and that may be good for the drought. However, it's also raising concerns for some Bear County homeowners. The issue isn't how much rainfall, but where it's going. Roger Rodriguez has lived in his Bear County neighborhood by Highway 90 for nearly 40 years. He says irrigation canals and ditches once redirected water overflow from neighbors' properties. Now, however, this county-owned retention ditch is ineffective. They believe it's part of the reason water filled with fecal matter has destroyed walls, furniture, and family pictures inside their home. And it's not just me who experienced all this damage and all the, all the issues. It's also my neighbor. Now we took her concerns to the Bear County Public Works Department. It says workers are in the process of obtaining a contractor to finish the remaining work that should be complete this fiscal year. We will continue to monitor this story as it develops. All right, now just past 6.15, if we're headed out the door in the next few minutes, let's get an update on the morning commute. And check in Stephen. Yep, enjoy that cup of coffee if you are still at home. There's no real reason to rush outside right now, but let's get you a look at Transguide. We still have that stalled vehicle off of uh, 35, the upper level. It's in the northbound lanes near Brooklyn, but if you are traveling through 37 at Fair Avenue, uh, be prepared. We're seeing a little bit more activity out there. Roadways aren't looking too bad for the most part there at 410 North at Ingram. We'll take you 
you to the map because uh, while we still have that stall vehicle out there, things have been pretty quiet for the most part. And as I was just talking, looks like another stall vehicle may have popped up there near 410 right along I-35. Looks like it could be close to Fisher Road, but we'll get a closer look and find out how that could be impacting the commute. Just always make sure to check your vehicles before you get your day started. Let's get you to some of those active road closures. This one is actually another one that will be taking place overnight over on the east side of Bear County and along I-10. We talk about some barrier work that has been ongoing for quite a while, but this will start uh, tonight, Thursday, October 27th, and should wrap on October 28th. I mentioned it's overnight, so 9 in the evening to 5 in the morning. Expect to see a full closure of the eastbound main lanes right there along FM 1518. But make sure to plan your commute ahead of time. Head over to our website ksat.com slash traffic for a full list of closures there. But right now it's just been pretty quiet for the most part, guys, which is always good news. Stephen, thank yes, you. Yes, sir. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Good, <laughs> yes, good yes. for Thursday. Good You're welcome. Thursday. Is the desk clear? I think we're clear. Yes. All right. Get That's the bus good. going on in here. Oh, Yay. I hit my hand. No, Thank sure. goodness we use Windex, right? I, I think yes. Uh, 50 degrees this morning. It's pretty cold out there in parts of the Hill Country. We've got some low 40s this morning. And then uh, we are going to see a few more clouds later on this afternoon. They'll continue to kind of thicken up as the afternoon rolls on. But it's going to be uh, a warm and a nice day. A little bit more in the way of humidity than yesterday. Yesterday was so nice to be That's outside. Nice. Oh, but um, today is going to be just a, another good day. Then we've got the rain chances moving on in here. All right, here is the beautiful shot of all the skeletons out there. Yes, indeed. And when it comes to skeletons, sometimes it's just all fun and games. I love that one. Is this where they're playing Twister and bocce ball and all sorts yeah, of stuff, right? Just, just kind of Yeah, there's an ice chest out there, too. Having a fun time. Yeah, blankets out there, a little cooler and everything. Why Don't forget not? Skeleton House of San Antonio on Facebook. Oh, that's what it's Skeleton House go. of San Antonio. Okay, mm -hmm. that's the Facebook page. It's got its own Facebook page now, Halloween decorations. I love that. Clear skies out there. It's going to be a gorgeous sunrise this morning. And like I said, temperatures will drop down to 50. Plenty of sunshine in the first portion of the day. And then as we go on, just a few more clouds moving on in here. 71 at noon. And then we'll make it up through the uh, 70s into 80 degrees uh, later on this afternoon. Again, more clouds kind of thickening up late this afternoon going on into dinner time. Rapid update computer model does a great job with this this afternoon. Lots of sunshine, more clouds out to the west. The clouds will continue to move on in here. A couple of showers then late tonight in the evening hours, one or two of them out there. Then we go into the overnight hours and that's when we start to see a few more of these showers right around Commute time is when showers and thunderstorms are going to be developing as the front moves on through here. You'll know when this thing comes through, not only with the rain, but also with the, the wind shifting around out of the uh, northwest primarily. And even a couple of heavier downpours can be expected. A couple of stronger storms are also going to be possible. This will be the situation, again, like I said, through the morning commute. After that, in through the mid and late morning hours. And then by noon, start to clear out in the hill country. And early afternoon, clear out here in town. Those showers, storms work their way off to the east. It is going to be windy in behind this, though, as well. Good night for football, but on the windy side. Now, late tonight, and this is pretty much the, the overnight hours, this is when the isolated chance for a severe storm, one or two of them out there, then that will work its way across the area, covering most of the area tomorrow morning, that chance for it, a better chance later on to the east as we get into the early afternoon hours. Um, High winds, hail, biggest threats with this, kind of like what we had uh, on Monday. And then we will have at least the small chance for an isolated tornado or two. Remember up in Gerald uh, on Monday, we had a couple of or at least one very small, very weak tornado that did cause some damage. Now, as far as rainfall amounts, uh, as you can see, just the overall picture, lesser amounts to the west and southwest, greater amounts. And we're looking at two plus inches widespread way, way up to the northeast. But uh, here in town, it's going to be and up the I-35 corridor off to the east, anywhere from, say, half, three-quarter inch of rain. And then you've got the, the heavier downpours with some of those thunderstorms. So tomorrow, you know, we're kind of looking ahead to the morning commute already, even though we're in it today. And there will be some spots on the roads where there's going to be some ponding on waters, maybe in some of the low-lying areas, a little bit of flooding with some of those uh, downpours. So that's what we'll have to watch out for tomorrow morning. 71 degrees at noon, sunny skies, high temperature makes it up to 80. A couple of degrees above normal, more clouds hanging around here, a few showers around tonight and then tomorrow morning showers, thunderstorms in the 
first part of the day up till about noon here in town. Then we start to clear out from west to east and it's going to be windy in behind that Saturday 73 for a high temperature. So kind of on the coolish side after starting off in the low 50s, both Saturday, Sunday, Monday, upper 70s. Nice day, more clouds, good trick or treat and weather. Another chance of rain on Tuesday, but tomorrow it's going to be uh, right now. It's looking like I don't mean to be chicken little run around, but you know it. It's going to be a, a rough commute with all the rain around, so just take it easy. Buy yourself extra time. That was our next question. How's it going to affect our morning? It'll be slow, and you know there'll be some problems out there. There will be some heavier downpours at times tomorrow morning too. So and those high winds. We'll make plans for our Friday morning then. Yep. Thank you. 621, 52 degrees. Apple is going to change its charging ports for iPhones soon. Why the company has to do this? There's nothing like volunteering at the fire department. There's nothing like hitting the waves. But with my moderate to severe eczema, it hasn't always been easy. Since my skin was so irritated and itchy. And even worse, with all my gear on. Now, I'm staying ahead of my eczema. There's a power inside all of us to live our passion. And Dupixent works on the inside to help heal your skin from within. It helps block a key source of inflammation inside the body that can cause eczema. So adults can have long-lasting, clearer skin and fast itch relief. Serious allergic reactions can occur that can be severe. Tell your doctor about new or worsening eye problems such as eye pain or vision changes, including blurred vision, joint aches and pain, or a parasitic infection. Don't change or stop asthma medicines without talking to your doctor. Healing from within is a powerful thing. Ask your eczema specialist how Dupixent can help heal your skin from within. In this morning's GMA's first look, a parenting alert, kids and gambling. If you have a phone on you and you have connection to the internet, you can gamble whenever you want. Steve is an 18-year-old speaking candidly about his gambling addiction, which began at age 15. He's asked to be in shadow, to use a different name and alter his voice to hide his identity. All it took was playing dice. From there, it just kind of grew. How much did you win? A couple hundred dollars. Teenagers and young people are significantly at higher risk of developing gambling disorder than adults, in part because their brains are not fully developed, just like they are with substance use disorders. Their ability to evaluate risk, their ability to handle loss, isn't as secure as an adult. And we'll have more on this important parenting alert coming up at 7 a.m. with your GMA First Look. I'm Juju Chang. Apple is changing its charging. The company says it'll rework its primary cable port on iPhone so that it's compatible with universal USB-C charging. The change comes in order to comply with those new European Union rules taking effect in 2024. Google has good news for its workspace individual plan users. They are getting a big storage upgrade from 15 gigabytes to one terabyte at no extra cost. That means there's no reason to worry about running out of storage. Google says the upgrade will happen automatically. Finally, to the world's fastest shoes. Take a look. They're called moonwalkers, and they're supposed to boost your walking speed by 250%. They have eight wheels powered by an electric motor. The company is hoping to have the shoes on the market by next year at about $1,400 a pair. Maybe you could start with the $700 shoe and work your way up to the pair, Steph. Uh, yeah, it's a little pricey for us. <laughs> Agreed. 626, 52 degrees. Here's a look at what's coming up. And a quick look at the roads with TransGuide. We'll have some more haunted stuff later on on GMSA. Looking at I-35 at looking there at mile marker 189, we see some flashing lights. We will be checking in with our Stephen Cavazos very soon. We are going straight outside with live cam this half hour to see how things are looking as we wait for the sun to come up in the next hour or so. Mike says tomorrow morning's commute could be a mess as far as rain and storms. We'll talk about when those could arrive coming up. And a good morning to you. It is Thursday. That would be October 27th. 
Thanks for joining us. And yes, we've been enjoying the beautiful weather, but now it's time for the rain. When do you think it'll all be here, Mike? It's going to be right about the time we go on the air tomorrow. It had looked like they there'll be a couple of showers around tonight, just one or two of them. Uh, but it looks like things are starting to get pushed back a little bit more. So it will be uh, in the morning again, right about the time we go on the air a little bit before that and then up through roughly noon. So in the heart of the morning commute tomorrow and through most of the morning, we're going to have some of these showers and thunderstorms around here. Let's talk about the uh, nice weather we're having again today. No glow of the sunrise as of yet, but it's going to be a pretty one like it has been the past couple of days. 52 right now, 45 dew points, so just a bit more humidity up. Not that you notice it necessarily, but just number wise, we're up a couple of notches from yesterday. No wind really to uh, to speak of. Low 40s, mid to low 40s parts of the hill country. 53 Stinson, 49 New Braunfels, Converse, as well as in Seguin. The uh, molds on the low side, update account comes out in about mm, roughly an hour or so. And as far as temperatures, we are going to be seeing uh, we're going to be seeing things get right up into the uh, upper 80, upper 70s, pardon me, 80 degrees. And then again, those showers and thunderstorms that will move through as the next front comes on through here. So any attempt at humidity returning is going to be kind of squashed, if you will, with that front that comes on through. So that'll dry us out, setting us up for a good looking weekend. But we'll talk more about those storms that are going to be moving through tomorrow, how much rain we might see and what the potential is for anything strong to, to severe. That's coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Mr. Cavazos, what's up? Well, uh, Mike, uh, well, unfortunately, we have entered that busy time with a big problem here along 35 at State Highway 46 in New Braunfels. So you can see those flashing lights out there, very dark, so we're not able to get a clear shot of it, but you see those lights uh, blinking out there in the distance along with traffic that is moving. Unfortunately, this is also in the southbound lane, so a lot of people make their way in from New Braunfels into to the Alamo City, so those South Bellings are always going to see a lot of traffic out there. This is one of those busy spots, so anytime an incident does pop up, we will see some delays. Uh, hopefully everyone is okay out there, but we have to watch out for those first responders so they can get this cleared up. Let's take you to the map. Uh, we are seeing a little bit of the delay. It's nothing too bad I'll, just yet, though. Southbound lanes, 35 near F, uh, near Loop 337. A little bit of a buildup there, but it's an area that we have to keep our eye on, especially now that we are entering morning rush. We're going to take a drive back here into town, a big drive, actually, and you can see there along this map, US 90 eastbound at Ray Ellison. Another crash also reported lot Lots of yellow, orange and red building up another spot where anytime an incident does pop up, it's going to cause some delays for drivers. I just spoke to our friends at Trans Guide. We need to get them back on the phone to find out if we can get a view of the conditions out there. But let's give you a view of the map and you can see that it is still pretty quiet for the most part around town. But those two problem spots is it's going to be a little bit tricky for drivers. So just plan uh, to pack some patience this morning with your cup of coffee. We'll get our friends on Trans Guide back on the phone. But for now, just watch out here along 35 southbound. This is a camera there at State Highway 46 for our friends in New Braunfels. Mark Stuff. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, San Antonio firefighters responding to a house fire on the city's northeast side. That home is being called a total loss now. We're learning one person has been taken to a hospital. Our Jonathan Cotto has been at the scene all morning and has more. Good morning, Mark and Stephanie. Things are starting to wind down here, but as you can still see, it's a busy morning and it's been a busy and early morning for San Antonio Fire Department that we know responded to this house fire here on the 14,800 block of Topper Wine Road near Greentop Drive, just in front of an Easy Mart and gas shell station. We are learning they arrived here to this house uh, just before four o'clock this morning. The house fully engulfed in flames. Firefighters are telling us that they had to enter the home through a window since the front part of the house was fully engulfed. Uh, they tell us inside was an elderly man believed to be in his 70s who did sustain injuries. He was taken to the hospital just as a precaution given his age. Now, uh, the man was able to tell firefighters that when he woke up, he noticed that flames were coming from the kitchen, primarily the stove area. So that may be some indication of where the fire started. But of course, the, the exact cause is under investigation. Fire investigators are telling us that the house house is still standing, but um, is considered to be a total loss. And again, the cause of the fire is under investigation. Reporting from the city's northeast side, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. 
San Antonio police and Crime Stoppers need your help tracking down the person responsible for robbing a family dollar store. This happened in the 6,000 block of West Commerce Street back on October 18th. Police say the suspect on your screen walked into the store, pulled a handgun on the clerk and demanded money from the cash registers. That person then walked behind the counter and pulled the money box from underneath the register, walking out with the box. If you have any information, you are asked to call Crime Stoppers. That number on your screen, 210-224-STOP. Well, the Texas Department of Public Safety and Brooks County Sheriff's Department continues to look for a man last seen in Falfurious, Texas, back on 3 a.m. on October 22nd. This clear alert continues this morning. 56-year-old Noel Garza was last seen wearing a cowboy hat with a maroon western-style shirt and blue jeans. He has brown eyes, weighs uh, just under 200 pounds. If you have any information on his whereabouts, you're asked to call the Brooks County Sheriff's Department at 361-325-3696. Today we are expecting a report into the shooting at Robb Elementary. It's coming from the director of the Department of Public Safety. The Public Safety Commission is holding that hearing this morning at 9. State Senator Roland Gutierrez and a number of Uvalde families plan to testify. We will also have a crew there. There are currently seven DPS officers under investigation by the Inspector General. On Monday, the DPS suspended Texas Ranger Christopher Ryan Kendall for the actions he failed to take during the response to the Robb Elementary shooting. Just last week, DPS Sergeant Juan Maldonado was fired. Crimson Elizondo, also under investigation, she left DPS to take a job as an officer for the Uvalde School District, but was later fired by that district. And early voting is in full swing. A race we are following closely out of Uvalde is the County Commissioner Precinct 2 race. Diana Oviedo Carew is running as a write-in candidate. She says she found her voice after surviving domestic violence and decided to use it after what she called failures on May 24th. Since that day, Oviedo Carew says she has been at nearly every city council and school board meeting fighting alongside families of victims for justice and accountability. Mariano Vargas sits in this seat for county commissioner and I made the decision then and there within a few weeks of, of that uh, knowledge and decided that I was going to run as a candidate. This is the first time Oviedo Caru has run for office like this. Javier Cáceres is also a first timer in the political ring running for the same position. Now we spoke with Cáceres earlier this week. You can find both of these stories and other election news on our website at KSET.com. A third writing candidate, Julio Valdez, declined to speak, and the incumbent, Mariano Vargas, did not respond to our request for an interview. A friendly reminder, what does Fest kicks off Saturday down at Hemisphere here in San Antonio. Scan the QR code right now for information. It's free and open to the public. We're excited for that. Yeah, we are. Great weather weekend. Time now, 638 and 52 degrees for now. Here's what's coming up. Halloween isn't just one day a year, it's a whole lifestyle at this local shop. I'm Katrina Weber, I'll tell you why these masks aren't the only thing that gives some people chills. The motto for one local business seems to be, why wait until October 31st? That Northside shop deals in Halloween horror 365 days a year. And as Katrina Weber shows us, it features one item that can give goosebumps to even goblins. From its eerie entryway to all its creepy corners, this is more than 1,200 square feet of scare. It's a combination of costume pieces and collectibles, just right for Halloween and beyond. You know, I always had like a love to like collect anything like horror related. A love became a living for Candy Dulcinea after COVID killed off her corporate job a couple of years ago. She opened stickers and stars near Thousand Oaks and Jones Maltzberger as a way for others to share in the spookiness. This self-proclaimed vampire feels right at home. Do I sleep in a casket at home? I'll never tell. Do I want to suck your blood? Well, I'll never tell either. With all of this merchandise, there's no doubt that this is a horror lover's dream, but there's at least one thing here that's not for sale. All right, follow me. Back in her own scary space is where Sarah the haunted doll hangs out most of the time. It's funny, 
something about that smile, we do feel it changes. Dulcinea adopted her by accident when she bought the tiny coffin from an oddities dealer. We couldn't get her out. Uh, the coffin is like, not just like shut, it's like sealed, it's sealed shut. It seems that Sarah doesn't exactly stay put though. Dulcinea believes it's this ghostly girl who's been making her presence known, pulling pranks like knocking down clowns and literally making customers' hair stand on end. That reputation now has people coming in just to see Sarah for a Halloween scare any time of year. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Wait, to get all together now, no, nope, no, nope, nope. thank you. Mm, no, <laughs> nope, not at okay. all. Uh, so we're told Stickers and Stars will be keeping some especially late hours this Friday, allowing five customers to spend the night with Sarah and take <laughs> part in a ghost hunting event. It sounds terrible. For more information on how you can get one of those tickets, you can check out the story on our website. But you know, there's a lot of brave people out there, and they will probably do that. 645. Let's go ahead and check in with our brave Stephen Cavazos. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't be one of them, but my sister had one of those porcelain dolls, uh, and they put it in my closet for whatever we reason, and you wind it up, <laughs> and it plays this very eerie Victorian-era music. No. And so at night, it started playing, and I, you know what? <laughs> have, a, have a question, <laughs> Stephen. Yes. How's therapy going? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? I, I, I didn't need any, uh, but it was a pretty scary situation. Ooh, that uh, is traumatic. It was that's a little great. scary. But you know what's also scary is the situation that we have here along yes. US 90 at Medeo Creek, guys. Unfortunately, big problem there. We have a crash that was reported right there by TxDOT. This is one of those spots. I'm telling you, we talked about it earlier. US 90 and the eastbound lanes, anytime there's trouble there, you're going to have a, an experience like this. Slowdowns, back to back traffic. We have to take a closer look at this, but this is something we'll likely monitor throughout the cut ins uh, in the morning. But US 90 eastbound, and Ray Ellison is where it's reported by TxDOT, and unfortunately, not the only incident we're tracking. Got to take a big drive up here along I 35 in New Braunfels. Those southbound lanes near Loop 337, a crash also reported there. That's causing some pretty serious issues for drivers. I would say it is getting pretty busy right now. As we give you a wide look at the map, you can see a lot of slowdowns are taking place and they're in the usual hot spots. But I would say those two areas are pretty bad. If you have to travel in those directions, make sure you pack your patience or look for some alternative routes. Let's get one last look here at Transguide where it is just bumper to bumper out there. So scary looking traffic, guys. I don't like it. We oh. want to figure out some ways to help you get back at your sister. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. You know, she had two of them, too. Oh, that goodness. would scare the bejesus out of she me. She moved when she put it back. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And they were in a box, too. What so happened to them? I don't want to know. <laughs> I don't want to know. Maybe there's, I got to ask my mom. I'm, I'm pretty yeah. sure they're still there. And I don't know why in my closet. Right. Maybe you had Is she an older space. sister? I have an older sister. And I have a young older sister. But the older sister was doing to you? Yes, well, my name. Yeah. She's probably watching right now, Kim. <laughs> yeah, she lives in Bernie. Oh, goodness. <laughs> Kim, we need to have a long talk. Ever since, <laughs> but ever since The Conjuring, um, yeah. it scared them. Oh. I get the heebie-jeebies with some of those dolls yes. and stuff. So. Yeah. Yeah. It was scary it's watching scary. the story. Anyway, let's go from scary <laughs> to cute. So, <laughs> this guy, Aww. he doesn't look happy. No. I don't know. It's kind of like, please take it off. I don't want to see anybody, anybody to see me like this. Uh, That's an adorable outfit, though. So well, cute. he's probably like, when I eat or drink, the ears get in my bowl. Yes. Just like Dumbo. Anyway, <laughs> great, uh, great picture. Thank you very much for that one. All right, we well, not quite the uh, glow of the morning uh, sunrise as of yet. Sun doesn't come up for about another hour. 50 degrees we will bottom out at and then work our way up through the 50s this morning. 50s, 60s up to 71 at noon. A couple of more clouds around here, so it's not going to be as picture perfect as yesterday was because yesterday was basically a, a perfect afternoon. It was so nice to be outside in the afternoon. 80 high temperature today. Wind is going to start to pick up. It's going to be on the breezy side. We will start to see not necessarily enough humidity to make you kind of sweat, but it's going to continue to go up. Also, clouds are going to continue to fill in later on this afternoon. Then we'll have a couple of showers that will move on in here later on tonight. Uh, late evening hours, one or two of the showers here and there just because the humidity starts to kind of kind of come back in and these are going to be preceding the front. Now by about the news time tomorrow morning or just before that is when we start to see some of the showers developing and then throughout the morning hours, more showers and thunderstorms. 
starting off obviously in the hill country and then working the way across the area. The majority and this rapid update models updated itself. The majority are going to be further up to the north going up in toward Austin on 35, but we'll still have some decent downpours around here. Uh, could see half inch, three quarter inch of rain and then localized heavier amounts with any of the thunderstorms that do develop, but everything should move along in a fairly decent clip, so it's not going to sit in one spot, but we will have to watch out for, you know, maybe some ponding on the roads tomorrow morning during the morning commute. Then that's all going to move on out of here by early afternoon and we'll see more sunshine. Also, it's going to be on the, the windy side. Some of the storms, there is the potential. They could be on the strong to severe side. High winds and hail would be the biggest threats An isolated tornado can't be ruled out. It's not very likely, though. And this will be the situation through much of the area through tomorrow morning or in the morning hours primarily. And then that's going to get bumped up a little bit in the afternoon as those storms move there off to the east. And again, the overall picture, lesser amounts of rain down to the southwest, more further up to the northeast. Here in town, we're looking at uh, anywhere from, say, inch, had three quarters, or excuse me, half an inch, three quarters inch of rain, uh, more up to the northeast. Again, then you've got the heavier downpours on top of that associated with any of the, uh, the thunderstorms around there. But that's kind of the, the broad brush, lesser amounts southwest, greater amounts up to the northeast. 71 degrees at noon today, sunny skies, high temperature will make it up to 80. So we gain 30 degrees from the low to the high, just like the past couple of days. Then tomorrow we're going to be starting off in the low 60s. Front moves on through showers, thunderstorms, a couple of decent downpours here and there. So again, it's going to be might as well plan for a slower commute tomorrow morning. And then we clear out in the afternoon. It's going to be windy, pretty windy for Friday night football and 75 for a high temperature. Then Saturday, only low 70s, mid 70s on Sunday. Cool starts, nice weekend, few more clouds, clouds on Monday and good trick or treating weather. That's right. Friday night football. We're still yep. well in season. And as far as the the threat for anything strong and severe, obviously Justin will have more at him later on tonight. So just stay tuned and then tomorrow morning, of course. All right, we show roll. Thanks, Mike. 651, 52 degrees. Take a look at what's coming up on GMSA at 9. We're about to check it out. We'll find out how well the kids held up to it compared to us. They might have done better than we did. <laughs> Maybe, probably. <laughs> It's more than just suds and a streak-free shine. Coming up on GMSA at 9, our haunted series continues at a spooky car wash and what our crew found lurking in the water and soap left them with some goosebumps. That's later this morning on GMSA at 9. Outside with live cam on your early Thursday morning. Just a hint of that sunrise on the eastern horizon. We'll be back after the break. Welcome back at 655. Let's check on traffic. Here's Steven. All right, guys, we still have big problems there along US 90, giving you that wide look at trans guide. Uh, it's just not gotten any better. This is one of those uh, incidents that we'll have to monitor closely throughout Good Morning America, but uh, just make sure that you drive carefully. If you're still at home, plan for some delays there along those eastbound lanes of 90 near Ray Ellison. Taking a quick jump over here, we're still monitoring this crash along 35 southbound right around Loop 337. The camera, though, is at State Highway 46, so we're seeing a, a little bit of uh, flashing lights. Lots of slowdowns is what you can expect at this hour. Just remember to pack that patience this morning. Mike, grab a coat, grab sunglasses. Look at the glow of the sunrise off there in the distance. We've got temperatures now 53, 40, 40s in the hill country. So yeah, still pretty chilly out there. Good looking day. Clouds will increase today. 80 high temperature, kind of breezy. A few showers tonight and then showers and thunderstorms tomorrow morning. It's going to be a slow going commute. Just plan ahead for it. And then windy in the afternoon. We'll be clearing out in the afternoon. Nice looking weekend. Uh, normal to cool temperatures, more clouds, good trick or treating weather. But uh, like I said, make sure you tune in tomorrow morning for the uh, latest on some of those showers and thunderstorms, potentially on the strong to severe side tomorrow morning. Sounds like a plan. Yep. Can you guys be back yep. here tomorrow morning? We'll do this again. Yes, we'll do it again. Do it all okay. again. All right, we'll meet right here. <laughs> we'll see you back here at nine.